ladies and today in this video I'm here to discuss with you one of the most important poems from class 10 syllabus and that is the trees written by Adrian Rich anybody who loves English literature American literature and especially American poetry must be aware of Adrian Rich's name because she was one of the most important figures of American poetry in the second half of the 20th century she was born on 16th of May in 1929 and the place was Maryland in US on 27th of March in 2012 she passed away majorly she wrote poetry but she also composed some beautiful essays on various other topics and the most notable work that she produced was diving into the wreck which was written in 1973 and it is about the speaker's deep sea dive during which she comes across a shipwreck but explodes at the deeper level this poem somewhere relates to the idea of liberation for women and like most other poems of Adrian Rich this poem too is somewhere rich in symbolism now if we further look at her career we find that she has got several honors and awards to her credit like in 1974, she got the National Book Award and the Bollingen Prize came her way in 2003. In 2012, she won the Griffin Poetry Prize. We remember Adrian for three important reasons for being one of the most influential poets of the 20th century. And second, through her writing, she brought to focus the misery and subjugation of women and made it a matter of public discourse and discussion. But she never tried to use this movement to serve her own selfish purposes. And she was not at all a fake feminist. Rather, she wanted equality for women in this patriarchal society. Now, let us look at the poem that we have to do and the themes which are running through the poem. Now, if we look superficially at the poem, we find that the poem talks about trees and afforestation and growth and confinement, that how confinement or captivity affects the growth of a person, whether it is of trees or a human being. And it is never good for the growth of a human being or anything in the world. But if we explore further, we find that this poem somewhere, it talks about the women who are waging a kind of war, all-out struggle to achieve freedom in this patriarchal setup. So this is about somewhere women empowerment. It's about the feminist movement that was going on at that time and perhaps it was in its second or third wave. So it's about the feminist movement becoming successful and achieving its objectives. Now let us look at the poem itself which is of 32 lines and they are divided into four different stanzas. The poem has been written in free verse. When I say free verse, it means a poem whose lines don't have a fixed or definite metrical scheme and it has, doesn't have even a definite rhyming scheme too. So this poem too has been written in free verse. Now let us read the first stanza of the poem. The poem says, The trees inside are moving out into the forest. The forest that was empty all these days where no bird could sit, no insect hide, no sun bury its feet in shadow. The forest that was empty all these nights will be full of trees by morning. So if we look at it, we find that it's about trees, which are somewhere captivated inside a closed space, maybe in a house, maybe in an observatory, maybe somewhere else in a campus. And they are not happy over there because in a limited space they are unable to register any growth therefore being dissatisfied they're moving out into the forest which is supposed to be their natural habitat and just because of their absence the forest has been empty all these days even the birds and the insects didn't have any place to sit and hide and the sun which has been burning throughout the day finds the solace in the shadow of the trees so the forest the sun even has been unable to bury its feet in shadow and relax itself such is the condition but tonight something different is happening tonight something revolutionary is happening 
because the forest that was empty all these nights is going to be full of trees by morning which have been absent from there for such a long time. Now if we explore further we find that here the poem has been used as an extended metaphor where trees symbolize women or community of women and the forest stands for the outside world. We know that women have been long confined to the four walls of their houses and they have not been given the place they deserve in the outside world. Therefore, they have been unable to do justice to the capabilities God has given them as human beings. So now being dissatisfied with their condition, with their growth, they have decided to break all the shackles of captivity and come out. So they are moving out into the forest. And the forest that was empty all these days, their life seemed to be coming to a standstill. The birds, the insects, all, even the sun, these are the elements of life. They seem to have halted somewhere. They seem to have come to a standstill. Now all these activities will begin again. Why? Because the forest, the outside world, which has been empty of women, now all these nights is going to be full of them by next morning. So it's about women making efforts to free themselves from the clutches of the male-dominated society and it is about their desire to become free, to do justice to the capabilities they have got and explore the further potentials. Now let us look at stanza 2 which reads like this, All night the roots work to disengage themselves from the cracks in the veranda floor. The leaves strain towards the glass, small twigs stiff with excession, long cramped boughs shuffling under the roof, newly, like newly discharged patients half dazed, moving to the clinic doors. So what a beautiful picture has been created with the use of imagery and use of a simile here. You see that words like disengaging themselves from the cracks, and leaves straining towards the glass and small twigs being stiff with exertion, long cramped bow shuffling under the roof, all these are subtle use of imagery to just create an image on the mind of the reader. So here the whole night the trees have worked very hard to free their roots from the ground, from the veranda floor where they have been fixed. And with their effort they have created the crack in the veranda floor and they are freeing their roots now. And all their organs are making an effort to free themselves from that state. Even the leaves are moving towards the glass. Glass represents the barrier that separates them from the outside world. And the small twigs which are supposed to be the tender part of trees, they have become stiff with exhaustion, exertion, too tired they are with all the effort they have put in. And the boughs which have been long cramped, because they have been captivated inside a very, very small space. They didn't find any place to grow, to free, to move about. Therefore, they have been long cramped. So even those long cramped boughs of the trees are shuffling. Those foliage are shuffling, moving here and there to find some space, to find the empty space to move out. Where? Under the roof. Still, they are captivated inside the house. And their movement from the house to the outside world has been compared to the movement of the newly discharged patients who are like walking in a half-dazed, half-conscious state while moving towards the clinic doors. After the patients have been treated, after they have recuperated, healed, they are moving toward, towards the clinic door. But since they are still under the effect of medication, still they are weak, still they need more time to recover, to adjust themselves to the conditions in the outside world, so they are walking with unsteady steps towards the clinic doors. Likewise, the trees too are making unsteady movement toward the outside world. Why? Because they have been captivated for a very long time and they will need time to adjust themselves to the present conditions in the world outside and it will take time to strengthen themselves completely. So now use of imagery and a simile has been prominent in this stanza. Now let us come to stanza 3. The poet say, I sit inside doors open to the veranda writing long letters in which I scarcely mention the departure of the forest from the house. 
The night is fresh. The whole moon shines and the sky is still open. The smell of leaves and lichen still reaches like a voice into the rooms. My head is full of whispers which tomorrow will be silent. If you look at the lines carefully, a beautiful use of pauses at the same time, uh, lines ending without punctuation, both have been mixed in such a way that they give the sense of motion at the same time, halts, the pauses. And the beautiful combination you find here. Like you see, enjambment has been in use. Like many of the lines are ending without punctuation marks. Like I sit inside, doors open to the veranda, writing long letters. But you see that the lines in between have been broken somewhere with the small pauses like commas. I sit inside. After that, there is a comma. Doors open in the veranda without any punctuation mark, then writing long letters. Such a structure of this entire stanza. And full stops keep coming after certain intervals. Now, they, they denote the shifts to another idea, another thing. So now, in the first two stanzas, we have seen that somewhere the poet has involved herself with whatever is happening around her. But in these two stanzas, the third and the fourth, you will find that she has somewhat disengaged themselves from whatever is happening around her. She has now got a bit disinterested or she is not giving it that much attention. The attention that it deserves. Why? Because I think the poet somewhere has been anticipating all this to happen. With the gigantic capabilities women have within, it was somewhere known thing that they would be they would be rid of that they would be fed up of their present condition and they would wage the war. They will definitely make all the struggles to free themselves from the clutches of this male-dominated society. Therefore, she has cut herself off the entire thing happening. Now she wants to watch it from some distance and not give it as much importance as she has been giving it in the first two stanzas. And now what she is doing, she is writing long letters. Such an important thing is happening. The movement of the forest is not possible in the real world. It, it is possible only in the fairy tales. But what we find here that the trees are moving towards the forest. This is something rare, something extraordinary. But still, she knows that such extraordinary things would happen because they are the need of the time. Okay, therefore, she is not paying it as much attention as we think she should. She has separated herself from everything that is happening. Now, what is she doing? She is sitting and writing long letters. So, writing long letters and not watching whatever is happening signifies she, is, she has distanced herself from everything. And in those letters, even she hardly mentions the departure of the forest from the house. All the trees have moved out or moving out still. She doesn't want to mention it because she knows that this is the order of the day. This is going to happen. This was anticipated somewhere. She was not taken aback because of this. Therefore, she doesn't mention it even. But she doesn't forget to say that the night is fresh. Generally, nights are the times to rest, to go to bed. But this night is some, something different. This is the night of freedom. This is fresh because it is providing women the opportunity to move towards freedom. But outside in the sky, in the world, the whole moon shines. Here the whole moon represents the traditional image of the women in the society. That they are delicate creatures, tender ones, beautiful ones, the weaker ones. They are better safe inside the four walls of a house. And that image is still somewhere going on or going around in the society that is intact still. But it's soon going to break now into pieces. And the whole moon shines in a sky still open. While on the other hand, the lips which are now fallen off the trees and the lichen which are not complete plants or complete trees, they're different from them. They're of the same species, but they're a bit different. So the, these small creatures, they signify the less developed or may say the most neglected parts of the society, maybe the transgenders, maybe the lesbians, which are still craving for attention, craving for freedom. And the smells which are coming from the fallen leaves or the lichens, so though that, that sharp smell is reaching uh, like a voice into the rooms and to the poet also. Like they are also making an appeal to be lifted up from this rut, to be liberated somewhere. So this is something very important that is happening. 
and then the poet says my head is full of whispers what kind of whispers the poet's head is when you go to do something very first time fear is bound to take over and now so many negative things start happening in your head all the voices whisper to you that you are not fit enough to do that you are not capable enough to do that you don't have the necessary power or the ability or the things you should not take that risk you should let better stay secure you should not take the risk these are the things which are going on in your head these are the negative whispers which happen to people when they take a big step for the very first time but these voices calm down after some time when the people uh, just adopt the new circumstances adjust to it likewise the poet says because she is also one of the members of the community of women which has been captivated uh, behind the four walls of a house so therefore she says here she identifies herself with the community and she says my head is full of whispers all the negative whispers are going on self talks are going on but these self talks she is not worried of because you know she all will be silent tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be the day of freedom the whole position will be completely altered and women now they will struggle they will find their space they will strengthen themselves they will adjust to the circumstances in a much better way so all these fearful voices inside one's head will be silent therefore she is not worried about them that's why she says tomorrow they all will be silent so now let us move towards the next and last stanza the poet says listen the glass is breaking and the first three stanzas you see they are the stanzas where the efforts are being met towards freedom and the last one we see the culmination of all the effort it's turning up successful now it's having impact now so the poet says to the readers appeals to the readers to listen listen to the the, the movement of the change and she says the glass is breaking the glass means the invisible barrier or barriers that the society has created for women to keep them somewhere inside the houses so that they don't compete with their male counterparts for the opportunities which are available for all but that grass is that grass glass is breaking now and the trees are stumbling they are still not making a very steady movement still they are moving on stumbling walking with unsteady feet roots now freed they are moving towards the outside world towards the forest into the night which is the night of freedom and see how the outside world is eager to welcome them so the winds which is the spirit of the outside world rushes to meet the winds rush to meet them it shows what an impatient movement is there what keenness is there okay in the outside world to welcome the women so winds rush to meet them so when she signify the spirit of the outside world which are also somewhere eagerly awaiting the presence of women over there and the moon which first signified the traditional image of a woman is now broken up like a mirror when a mirror falls down on the ground it breaks into several silver pieces so with the effort of the women that moon is broken into several silver pieces pieces of a mirror and one of its piece which is shining is hanging on the crown which is the highest point of a tree of the tallest oak we have talked about confinement and what an effect upon has on the growth of something now when the trees were confined so their growth was stunted but now being freed they are registering growth they are growing stronger and that's why the poet has compared the women to the tallest oak trees which were very small dwarfed inside the closed space now have become as tall as the tallest of the oak likewise women having been freed and just exploring their potentials have registered growth got a strength that's why they have been here compared with the tallest oak at each and every step we find the use of metaphors very subtle very wise use of metaphors uh, you find there in the poetry so on one of the tallest oak the broken image of the moon one of the pieces is hanging up like a symbol of victory that trees have registered against all the circumstances in this male dominated world or in, against this enclosed space 
Now women have waged war for freedom and now they have won the war. They have become successful. And now the traditional image is completely shattered. One of its pieces is hanging upon them like the symbol of victory newly won. So this poem is really very, very beautiful extended metaphor which talks symbolically about the condition of women in the society and how they have been making all the effort to register victory and to get complete freedom to do justice to whatever God has given to them. So I hope you have understood the poem and if you have really understood it, you are welcome to like my video and please also subscribe it so that I can send you the notifications for the upcoming videos too. So till then I would like to say good night for today and meet you very soon. Thank you very much.